Did you know that Chelsea has so many players that they no longer fit in the locker room? Some athletes are sitting on the floor during meetings, and others have to change in the hallways before training. With over 40 players in the squad, Chelsea has almost 20 more players than Manchester City and has already spent more than 1 billion euros on transfers. But what could be behind this overcrowding? After all, what does Chelsea know that other clubs don't? Possibly Chelsea knows something that the football world hasn't discovered yet, and that may shock everyone in the future. An anonymous scout told ESPN, the club is taking an unprecedented approach. Currently, they have eight goalkeepers under contract, four of whom are on loan, and yet they signed a ninth goalkeeper. Does that make sense to you? It may seem like poor management, but it's directly related to a past of severe penalties the club fears facing again. The strategy is aggressive. They broke the British transfer record twice in six months, first with Enzo Fernandez and then with Moises Casado, both playing as central midfielders. This isn't common, and it's exactly this approach that has left many wondering if there's a secret plan or just a lack of planning. And it doesn't stop there. In attack, they brought in Joao Felix from Atletico de Madrid, even before confirming Sterling's departure. And on the last day of the window, they signed Sancho for Manchester United. The problem is that Felix and Sancho play in the same positions as Sterling, along with other players who were already in those areas. So far, Chelsea has spent £256 million on these players, many of whom have barely worn the team's jersey. In the Premier League, teams can only register 25 players. But Chelsea, by the end of the window, had already registered 30, not counting the under-21 players. This creates an obvious surplus and a management challenge where many talents end up wasted on the bench or loaned out. Chelsea's strategy is clear. Long contracts and low initial salaries with promises of raises based on performance. Unlike most clubs that offer three to five-year contracts, Chelsea opts for seven, eight, or even nine years. Enzo Fernandez signed for eight and a half years and Casado for eight years with an option for a ninth season. This strategy may seem risky, but it's part of a plan to secure talents long-term and protect against future inflation in the market. The fear of another penalty is evident. Chelsea's philosophy is to avoid what happened in 2022 when they lost two important defenders for free. Now they are aggressively targeting the market to secure players across multiple positions. It's like having an entire reserve team for each position, preventing any future problems. But does this strategy really make sense or is Chelsea just stacking up future problems? In total, Chelsea's squad has 41 players and the sum of remaining contract years is absurd. 191 years in total. For comparison, Tottenham, with the second highest number of active contracts in the Premier League, has only 97 contract years in effect. This disparity shows how Chelsea is operating on a completely different level from its rivals, raising the question, do they know something others don't? Chelsea's management has changed radically. They've gone through five coaches, emptied the youth academy, and transformed a European champion team into a group now accumulating losses. Even the fans are asking, is this just poor management or is there something darker at play, like money laundering? Under new management, Chelsea has let go of 38 players and brought in 40 new ones. However, of the nine players from the first transfer window under the new owner, only three are still in the main team. Thiago Silva, who left in May, commented that they had to expand the locker room to accommodate everyone. The environment is so chaotic that some players are left without space to sit during meetings, reflecting the internal disorganization. A scout who preferred to remain anonymous said, maybe Chelsea knows something we don't, but this squad building makes no sense. I don't see logic in bringing in six defenders or seven attacking midfielders. To him, it's as if Chelsea is playing an entirely different game. Chelsea's situation also has an unexpected connection with the president of Russia. Things went downhill when the United Kingdom identified Roman Abramovich, the club's former owner, as an ally of Putin following the invasion of Ukraine. Abramovich was forced to sell Chelsea, which ended up in the hands of new owners, with conflicting visions for the club's future. This leadership change not only shook Chelsea's foundations, but also drastically altered the club's direction. Todd Bailey wants to invest in long-term projects, such as building a new stadium with a 20 to 30-year vision, while Egg Bali prefers shorter commitments just over a decade. This difference has created a civil war behind the scenes. 
further complicating the club's management. This internal dispute reflects the chaos that has spread to the field, where results have fallen far short of expectations. In the past three years, Chelsea has invested more than 1 billion euros in signings, surpassing even PSG, which spent 721 million. The Premier League limits losses to 105 million pounds over three years, but Chelsea recorded a loss of 89.9 million in 2023, a figure that would have been higher if not for a suspicious sale of two hotels linked to the club. A move that helped ease the accounts but raises questions about financial practices. Despite heavy investment, Chelsea's performance has been disappointing in recent editions of the Premier League. In the first season under new owners, the club finished 12th, was eliminated early in English competitions, and exited the Champions League. Last season, it finished 6th, missing out on a Champions League spot, a steep decline for a club that, under Abramovich, rarely went a season without trophies. The focus on young prospects continues, especially in the South American market. From Brazil, they brought in three reinforcements, Andre Santos, Washington, and most recently, Steven, known as Massinho. Steven earned this nickname surprisingly as a child for an unusual reason in Cruzeiro's youth ranks. So will this strategy turn Chelsea into the next giant in world football? Or are we about to witness the club's greatest fiasco in history? Time will tell. And you, fan, what do you think of Chelsea's strategy? Comment below and stay tuned for more behind-the-scenes football analysis.